Hi, I'm Sarah from Conservation and this is the final day of the social media event for the European Day of the Conservative Restorer. And this, to my mind, is the best because it's a more traditional studio visit. I've been rattling around the studio by myself for most of lockdown, so I would have loved to have had you all in here for a good studio visit, but we're working in different, um, a different situation at the moment. So I just thought I would have a bit of a video instead. This is our conservation studio. There's space for six conservatives here at the moment, for bench space wise, but we don't have the staffing for that yet. Um, we have things like the um, humidification chamber where we can flatten things. Oh. I've been working on volumes recently, but those volumes are closed collections, so it's better to go back a bit and look at flat material that's open and you can see, and isn't that more fun? So, I have some large mats and I have some parchment. This is something that is not suited yet. This is sometimes how we get collections in. This is, it came in in a non-archival envelope, so this is quite acidic. And this will get moved into something that's acid-free, archival grade acid-free paper. And you can see that this came out of here and it's very unhappy, it's all folded. And if you were to give this to a member of the public who would want to come in and view it quite rightly, it's, it's, it, um, well, our record should be available to the public, um, it's quite difficult to handle and the risk of further damage occurring to this map is quite high. So, if we open this out, and actually, coincidentally, I've opened it up the way around, we can see that there's a large bit of the map missing, which is problematic in itself, but it's a hand-drawn map. So, all this information, it's, it, it's all unique, it's hand-drawn. Um, so what we want to do, the, there are several things we could do here. First of all, we could clean it. Um, we could humidify it in the humidification, in, in the humidification chamber. Um, and we can do tear repairs. This is quite lengthy. We have to think about staff resources and, and priority of treatment to do that. We could rehouse it. So we could store it flat. We could put it between blotters, leave it over the weekend, let it flatten and then put it in a, in, in a flat folder and give that to the, the uh, researcher who wants to see it. That's probably what's going to happen with the, the, the timing so far. But were it to be flattened, it would go into the, the hood of the suction table over there um, and a, a fine mist would, would gently relax the substrate, it would relax the paper substrate. Now, there are a number of reasons why things would come in for treatment. If a reader is requesting them, then we know that that's a popular document and it's more likely to be um, requested again. That would be a, a high priority document. It might be exhibition. So these uh, parchments here were in, in storage. And you can see here the you can see here the skin is, 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 is um, undulating, the cockering of the skin here. And that's because this, this piece of parchment was all curled up over itself and was put in a humidification chamber. Um, it, it, moisture was added to it. It was unfurled. It was then put under very gentle weight. You have to be careful with, with um, um, parchment not to press it too much. Um, put on a very gentle weight and then left there for, for about a month just to fully um, get, get the, the moisture, moisture out of there and obviously the bottles were changing as well. Now when we're handling parchments in the reading room we're being very very careful not to touch the pigment or the ink because parchment is not a porous substrate like paper is and so it's very easy for the, the um, surface media to, to lift off. Um, but now they're flattened, they were, these two were on display before lockdown and now they'll go back in their custom enclosure into storage. And then these ones, you might have seen these before on social media, um, that's because <laughs> you know, it's been a slow year with interventional treatment, what can I say, access to the studio hasn't been brilliant. Um, these were all stored, rolled up. Um, but the condition of the mats meant that they couldn't really be taken in and out of the cycle pack, this rolled storage. Um, and actually at the moment, with the COVID restrictions, with the social distancing restrictions, we can't really 
we, 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 we just can't provide psychopaths in the reading room because um, most of the time it's a two-person job to get the material safely out of them and we can't have two people doing that because of social distancing so it's very problematic. You can see that this is a, is a thick paper and it's lined with uh, canvas backing and so when I was pressing it I wanted to mm, keep a bit of that, that um, it, it took a lot more pressing to get flat and keep a bit of that memory so that um, you can remember what it's like. This man, this section was fully detached and so this has had local repairs mainly to the back with a very fine Japanese tissue and neat starch paste and that now has taken this from a, a map that was folded up into what 12 pieces, curled, each, each section was curled in a different way. It's gone from something that it was impossible to handle safely to something that can go out to the reading room and be handled within our, within our handling guidelines. <laughs> can be handled safely within our handling guidelines um, and not cause any further damage or potential loss to original material. And that potential loss to original material is the underscoring um, reasoning behind any intervention treatment. So there's no one size fits all with conservation treatment. And so even though these six maps came out of the same cycle pack, they all had different treatments done to them. Some of them were only flattened, um, and that was, that was sufficient for them to be in good enough condition for them to be used in the reading room. This one um, required local um, repair, localised repairs for the Japanese tissue, like this. A lightweight Japanese tissue that when you paste through, you can't see. Um, you see little bits of Japanese tissue here that aren't visible and you can see just here as at the joint where the paste has, has made the paper cockle a little bit. Um, but that's, that's where the repair was, that's where the Japanese paper is. Um, but it means that the repairs are there. Um, one thing I should mention is that everything is tested, all, all the inks are tested for their solubility, but particularly in a map like this, we're very careful about iron gore link. So inks like this are corrosive. We have to be very careful about the amount of moisture we're introducing to those inks because it, it acts as a catalyst to their deterioration. Um, and then there are um, maps where um, localised repairs were needed. So you can see the tears coming along here, all this, all this side, the, the blue textile had come off and all this edge had curled over and there were tears all along it. And those were locally repaired with the wheat starch paste and infilled. Two mats such as this one, which was washed and relined. Uh, again, we had to make sure that we tested all of the inks to make sure that they, the, to check their solubility and make sure that nothing was going to run when we immersed it in water. They were then um, lined with a thicker Japanese paper, which um, again supports the two halves. You can see here where the map used to be in two sections and providing that support, that lining at the back. Um, and supports the, the two sections and allows it to be accessed in the reading room, it can be handled now. So that's what intervention treatment looks like. We've not done a huge amount of it in, in, in recent years, but we're building back up to it. Um, why do we do time consuming and costly intervention treatment when we can take a photograph of something or rehouse it? Because we have, and that's because we have responsibility to the material integrity of our collections as well. It's not just enough to take a photograph of something. We have to stop the deterioration of the original as well.